This program is part of WQED's Pittsburgh History Series. On August 28, 2018, I made a pie, an Atlantic Beach pie, that I shared with some friends here at WQED, the public television station where I work, and with Gabe Setra, my friend who's a mailman who loves pie. So I stayed at work late that night, and about 9.30, as I was coming out to my car, I was carrying a case of bubbly water. And as I came down these stairs, I missed the bottom step and I fell. It wasn't even dramatic, but I realized as I tried to get up, I couldn't move my left leg. It just wasn't working. So as there was no one around at first, I called 911 and eventually an ambulance came and took me to Presby. Presby is what we Pittsburghers call the nearby hospital that's officially UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. There, I found out that I had ruptured my quadriceps tendon just above my left knee. And I was scheduled for surgery in the morning and I'd have a long, slow recovery that eventually included my seven weeks in McGee. McGee is what we Pittsburghers call the nearby hospital that's officially UPMC McGee Women's Hospital. My stay there is what this program is mostly about. This program in the Nebi series is made possible in part by the Buell Foundation, serving southwestern Pennsylvania since 1927. By Lewis Anthony Jewelers, proud supporter of Pittsburgh and its treasures. By Huntington Bank, serving communities since 1866. By Levin Furniture, furnishing Pittsburgh homes since 1920. Also by the Engineers Society of Western Pennsylvania. By Henny Henninger. By the Lincoln Pharmacy in Millvale. By Mancini's Bread. By Pamela's P&G Diners. And by all 1,411 backers of our Nebby Kickstarter. Thanks to everybody. So, I had surgery and I somehow ended up in a bed at UPMC Montefiore Hospital where I had time to start to contemplate some of the complications from my fall. My leg in a brace, no bending the knee or weight on my left leg for weeks. They wake you up early in the hospital. I turn on the TV and that early morning traffic guy on WTAE, ay ay ay. But I had a beautiful view looking north and before the end of the first day, my friend and cameraman, Frank Caloiero, had brought me some of his homemade veal meatballs with peppers, basil, and tomato sauce on pasta. It made the hospital food look somewhat drab. On September 1st, a nurse said she was going to change my dressing. If you don't want to see my stapled incision, look away for a few seconds. One of the odd things, I really had no pain except for the first day after surgery. Now, Dr. Peter Siska was the ace orthopedic trauma surgeon who put me back together at Presby and helped me understand better the whole ruptured quadriceps tendon thing. This is a model of a right knee with the femur bone, which is the top part of the knee joint, and the tibia, the bottom part of the knee joint, and in between is the patella, which is the kneecap. So the quadriceps tendon is this part right here, and what that does is it connects the quadriceps muscle to effectively the tibia. And so what do you, how do you fix it? Well, um, the first thing you do is you uh, define where the tear is and then actually um, debride or uh, cut away the diseased portions of the tendon. And um, it kind of looks like, you know, like a shoelace that gets a little bit frayed at the end of it. It looks like that and you take it back to tendon that is healthier looking and then uh, scrape a little bony trough in the patella to get bleeding bone there. Uh, that can help uh, enhance the healing process. So you get the healthy tendon to the healthy bone and you attach it um, by weaving heavy suture up the tendon and back down uh, a couple different times. You have the ends of the suture that you then pass through the kneecap through drill holes that we make in the kneecap and you, you shuttle them through and bring them to the other side, then you hold the legs straight, and then you tie the suture knots on the other end of the kneecap, or the inferior pole of the patella, uh, to then basically dock the quadriceps tendon into the patella and hold it there. A lot to learn. So still in Montefiore on Saturday, September 1st, 
I posted an appreciative review of my big hospital breakfast on Facebook. One of Dr. Siska's men had said, eat lots of protein. So now all my friends knew about my accident and the impending recovery. And at lunchtime, I was surprised by my buddy Zach Tanner and his wife, Kate Palmer, who brought me a hot dog from the original and some O fries. I was starting to feel like a king. And then that evening, my good friend and coworker, Matt Conrad, and his girlfriend, Jen Gleason, came to visit, bringing with them fresh rolls, tom yum soup, and dumplings from Thai Cottage in Regent Square. All this food was a surprise and continued to be so in the morning when a box of beautiful baked goods from La Gourmandine was delivered by my one-time colleague, Michelle Pagano Heck, quickly followed by Mike Munns with a pizza from Fiori's, my favorite, sausage with anchovies. Not everybody brought food. That afternoon, Darren Tidrick, studying to be a nurse, stopped by. We had met a few times, but really knew each other because we play online Scrabble almost every day. It was good to just talk. Monday, September 3rd was Labor Day, and I'd already been told I'd have to move on, probably the next day, to a skilled nursing facility or nursing home. I couldn't fret because Mike Kukaro arrived with his daughter Cora, a real cutie. Mike used to work on our WQED website. Then in mid-afternoon, I was delighted to see Supani Kansuan Yeneral and her husband Kevin walk in the door. She is the chef and co-owner of the tiny Thai restaurant called Mainam Thai that I love in Blanox. She made me some exquisite small fresh rolls with pork and carrots and basil leaves that are called Guotio Louis Suan. They're not on a regular menu, along with a special spicy Nam Jim sauce. I loved these rolls and shared only with a few favorite nurses. That evening, my cameraman friend Frank came back with his twins, Sam and Sophia, and they brought more homemade Italian food. The next morning, I think because of my positive review of the hospital food on Facebook, I was invited to order lunch from the new Inside the Hospital Pizza Oven place. Good pizza, good salad, even a bottle of the bubbly water that helped get me here. But that afternoon, I was out of Montefiore transported via ambulance and gurney to 3600 McGee, to the TCU or Transitional Care Unit. Dr. Siska had suggested it. The folks there overseeing it are, are very good, they're responsible, you know, they're in constant contact with the physicians uh, back up here, you know, if there's any issues or anything. So I know who's taking care of you there too. I think they do a wonderful job. This doesn't go to 3600, it only goes to 3599. <laughs> I love the guys who transported me, but I feel bad now because I realized he was going the shortest route, but my comment made him take me the long way around. As I was being wheeled into the TCU, I was told, your family's already here. Since I don't have any family in town, I was intrigued. Who was already in my room? It was Gabe Setra, my mailman friend who loves pie, with his wife, Lee. They brought me a bag of baked goods from Kretschmar's Bakery in Beaver, PA, where they'd gone on a day trip. They set the tone for much that followed here at the TCU. TCU stands for Transitional Care Unit. So what we are is a short-term nursing home within McGee Women's Hospital. So we're licensed as a nursing home, but we are in the hospital. So we have all the resources of comprehensive care services of the hospital, but also offer the skilled needs such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy that a skilled nursing facility would offer. That's Erin Simyak. She's the director of nursing here, and she and administrator Holly Valella keep this place humming. They put me in room 3172. With my cell phone, I started taking pictures of lots of things, not because I anticipated making a TV program, but really just for social media. I hesitated to post anything about the crawfish boil that Wayne Minnix brought from the 4th Street Barbecue in Charleroi, because I didn't want other people to feel obligated to bring me anything. Not a bountiful basket of Pittsburgh from the WQED Employees Activity Committee. Not surprise bakery treats from bakeries all around town. And then I was totally surprised by a present from Paula Frankenfield Fedornak, the HUC, Health Unit Coordinator, there at the TCU. She brought me an all about Pittsburgh board game from the early 1980s because she thought I'd use it somehow. I love it. 
Then that first Thursday, my great friends from high school, Marianne Lindauer and Bob Sherko, stopped by for dinner with great Italian food from La Tavola on Mount Washington. The next day, my brother Pique and his friend Renee showed up with homemade brownies and a reacher grabber tool that was incredibly helpful whenever I dropped things. I need to acknowledge Matt Conrad for yeoman service my whole time in there. He went to my house, got my mail, my shirts, shorts, underwear, and often picked up dinner at Oishi Bento, the Asian place we love in Oakland. And George Hasmanolis from WQED made many trips to bring me my New York Times from my office. My best editor friend, Kevin Conrad, also delivered, and Allison Blackwell, too. Actually, lots of folks from work came by and brought many presents, edible as well as readable, including Rebecca Bourne, who brought me tiny tomatoes from her garden that turned out to be stupendous, colorful additions to many plates of food. The QED cook, Chris Fenimore, came by and we compared skills with our walkers. I was allowed to move around with the walker if I hopped on my right leg. And some days, packages were delivered. So Paula, who brought me the board game, just brought me this box. <laughs> and I'd been warned, um, you can tell from the, the carton itself, uh, that it's from smileycookie.com. And I, uh, I thought I'd do one of these online package opening. You can come in closer, Paula, if you want. Um, you're just, right there, you're okay. good to see what's in here um, and here we go this is like one of those opening videos we were so sorry to hear about your injury and wanted to send a sweet gift to say thanks for making us smile all the time get well soon from the smiley cookie factory uh -oh. and oh my god there's a lot of smiley cookies in here. Holy Christmas. You know? <laughs> so these will uh, these will you. these will become bribes for nurses. That works. Of course I did get a lot of professional attention and multiple sessions of physical and occupational therapy every day. And I tried to share the treats I got whenever I could. But I wasn't going anywhere, and cool kindnesses continued. Like Marcus B. Shepherd, artist and illustrator, who worked for a while at WQED. He surprised me with a beautiful get well poster he drew of Spider-Man. I liked that Spidey's quadriceps in his left leg were so well defined, inspirational. And my cameraman Frank brought me a real bowl so I wouldn't have to eat his wife's homemade chicken soup out of a plastic container. Christina Dickerson from the Saver Pittsburgh event brought me seafood soup and a video showing how it's served at the restaurant Coast in Maine in Monroeville. I posted a photo of a hospital hamburger that I doctored with various ingredients, so James Cataldi from Burgatory thought I needed two of their burgers and four milkshakes. Nurses and staff became taste testers. Now, lots of folks know Andy, who makes sushi at Woolies in the Strip. I sent a video. Hey Andy, it's Rick Seaback here. Uh, my friend John Maggio is holding this phone to show you the video. <laughs> he said he was going to Woolies and he'd bring me something if I wanted anything and I'm in the hospital and I'll be here for a couple more weeks and I said oh I might really love some Andy sushi so you know what I like take care of John too my treat the fish was stupendous and John Maggio also brought me a small red elephant that was one of his collection of carnival chalk prizes from Kennywood and then one day, the young filmmaker Willie James stopped by, and I challenged him to see if he could do the walker push-ups that I couldn't it. manage. Oh. He won. But not long after, my very fit actor friend Tom Kolos came by, and he, of course, could do those push-ups all day long. My pal Margie Whitmer brought me some scandalous reading materials. My work buddies Sharon Steele and Lance Jones came with cool comics. And Patty and Cindy, the Gracie girls from New Kensington, stopped with sweets. Then Andy and Mary Winscoe from Pittsburgh Smokehouse supplied both savories and sweets. In mid-September, my sister Niecy and her Bill Scott were evacuated from their home in North Carolina by Hurricane Florence. They drove here to stay in my empty house and brought me dinner from Piper's Pub, but also brought dishes from my home. And I learned, familiar plates matter. Obviously, familiar folks matter too, 
And I think because of how social media connect us in ways that we're not even aware of, friends from all through my life stopped by, including my friend Carol Karn. We met when she was the coach of my 7th grade drama club at Bethel Park Junior High. She brought me a milkshake from Page Dairy Mart. Lots of folks from my Bethel Park days stopped by. Kathy Clark Hickling was in my 8th grade class. Then there were people like Tom Weisbecker, who was in my show, Sandwiches That You Will Like. He brought his daughter and granddaughter. Jason Clark from the Arcade Comedy Theater brought me one outstanding mortadella sandwich from Driftwood Pizza in Lawrenceville. We shared it with my great cameraman friend, Bob Lebomsky, who's always got a book or two he thinks you should read. I called and requested only one visit, Kimberly Lamburn. She's been cutting my hair for about 18 years and she agreed to come and trim my head. Her husband, Will, came too, and he took these pictures. I was totally surprised when Kim Umoru stopped by with her two daughters. She was my mom's hairdresser at Lady Di's salon in Bethel Park. Surprises never stopped. One evening, two dinosaurs came into my room. It was a while before I realized they were my friends, OJ and Carrie Yuri. They brought dinner too, that we shared in the TCU activities room. By then I had learned to move around in my wheelchair, and I liked wheeling down through the lobby and the big revolving door to sit outside on what I called the front porch of the hospital, get some fresh air and an unusual view of Oakland. Then one day Allison Keating walked up with her friend Sharon Spooner. Allison had been bringing me pawpaws for several years. They're the delicious local fruit, I think she picks them on the south side slopes. When they're perfectly ripe like these, they taste like a mix of banana and mango. Tropical with big seeds, exotic but local. And one day, one of my physical therapists suggested I wheel myself down to the garden that I didn't even know existed in the center of the hospital. It's like a beautiful bucolic getaway for patients and visitors. It's got a picturesque little pond in the middle with some colorful carp called koi, and it always seems tranquil. That's a part of the healing process. Come to our gardens. Relax, take a deep breath. That's Chris Vitsis. He's McGee's Director of Operations and Hospitality, and he's responsible for this space, including all that's grown here. Potatoes, cabbage, tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, squash. Um, we grow a, a lot of things, and we try to grow it in bulk so that everyone can enjoy, as opposed to just one or two people. It's used in everything that we do here at the hospital. He also is in charge of the turtles and fish. 15 turtles in there and over 20 fish, yeah. I developed special affection for the organic herb garden to the one side. I visited here often for things to add to hospital meals. Herbs are actually a great way to doctor things up, to add that flavor without adding any poor nutritional content to what you're doctoring up, so good job on that part. It was good to come here with my visitor, Doug Oster, the editor of Everybody Gardens for the Tribune Review. He found more spices and tomatoes and beans and things that I could take back to my room for the food. One day, the wonderful Spanish chef, Daniel Aguera, who lives in the North Hills, came by with his wife, Laura, and their two daughters. They also found new treasures in the garden for me. Visitors were an amazing resource, and those bearing food were always welcome. One night, Kara Shutterly and Ben Sloan, the chef at the restaurant called Kaya in the Strip, brought me some of their famous fried chicken and a slew of sides. A feast. Then on September 20th, Pete Kurzweig from Lorelei in Hidden Harbor dropped by with a lamb galette, a sort of French pie. Donald Doherty from Gaucho was already there with several dishes, so they stayed, and Alberto Benzicane joined Matt and me for some superb supper. Another evening, my fellow UNC graduate, David Bennett, brought Alex Bodnar from Yosha Corner, the Hungarian restaurant in Hazelwood, with a huge selection of soup and bread, salad and goulash. Before the end of the meal, Brooke Franis and Lee Schmidt arrived, and we all had ice cream from Elwood City. Just a day or two after that, Andy Winsco was back, and photographer Heather Mull was there, Matt too. We all ate Brunswiger in that activities room. Late one morning, the good folks from Lulu's Noodles on Craig Street at the other end of Oakland brought a wonderful Asian lunch that we shared. And then there was the day that my great friend Manette Seat stopped by with reading material. 
followed soon after by chef Sonia Finn from Dinette in East Liberty, carrying three of her famous pizzas. We three set the table in the activities room. The food was delicious and beautiful. Even the box with an original cartoon by Haas was fun. Another evening, my buddies Jason, Michael, and Bess from the Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer brought a homey tablecloth, some groovy old napkins and plates, some tasty pies, and a salad from Badamo's Pizza. We chowed down. It was a party. And late one afternoon, Kayla Noguera Cook brought me some of her Brazilian specialties from her brand new restaurant called Casa Brasil in Highland Park. She knows I love Guarana, the Brazilian soft drink too. Muito obrigado. You might think I did nothing but greet and eat, but I did my PT and OT. And when Millie's ice cream sent a bunch of pints with toppings for Sundays, I shared them with the therapists, hoping to kill them with kindness. <laughs> Once I had to go to Dr. Siska's office to get my staples removed. You doing okay? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. How often do you have to do this? Uh, well, today I'm working with Becca, so it's her post-op clinic. So I've been doing this all day long today. Is this a lot of staples, 55? No. No, this is nothing. Other people have more? There's a lot more. It wasn't painful, sort of a relief, but I was still in the brace and still astounded by the generosity and kindness of people. Some I'd never met before. Some were old friends, some stopped by several times. I felt slightly guilty because I couldn't remember the last time I visited a friend in a hospital, and I don't think I ever took someone food in a hospital. I learned. In October, I got an unusual note on Facebook Messenger from a woman named Nikki, who called herself Random Yinzer from Beachview. She and her husband, Norman, had decided to get remarried in Pennsylvania because something about their old out-of-state license was not recognized here. Could they come to McGee and would I be a witness? I asked the TCU folks if it was okay, and they said yes, of course. The other witness, Nikki's friend Ellen, brought the balloons. Then there was a text from my musician friend, Reed Connolly, from the Beagle Brothers. Do you think we'd be allowed to bring our instruments and play in your hospital room? Again, I got an okay. I invited some folks and we got an amazing concert in the activities room. played for about an hour. God bless the Beagle Brothers. But the amazing parade of surprises didn't stop at that point. It never faltered. Friends kept stopping by, more people from work. One of my Nebby programs, Meet Pittsburgh, won an Emmy in Philadelphia, and the statue was delivered. There were bountiful banana splits from Clavon's ice cream, a crazy pirate who caused a sensation, a nice pierogi dinner, and unexpected visits galore. David Newell, who played Mr. McFeely on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, stopped by, and everybody wanted a picture with him. Jean-Marc Chatelier and his wife Sandy came by and brought Breton cakes from their bakery in Millvale. Jennifer Cohen from the Lincoln Pharmacy in Millvale came too and brought me a chocolate pie. There was one Saturday when Ernie Ricci, one of the stars of Meet Pittsburgh, came by with massive quantities of his famous Italian sausage, Lil's sausage rolls, stuffed banana peppers, at that same time, Richard Corsi from Yinsburg Barbecue showed up with samples of his meats and southern sides. And we had a massive layout of food. Food, food, food. Remember that traffic guy from WTAE? My buddy Sam Hall? He tried to be funny. On October 24th, Nan Cohen from KDKA Radio and her husband Mel, along with Marlene Leshnock Druskin from Dorothy's Candies in White Oak, arrived with shopping bags full of chocolates. Too much for one man. So the nurses made out, and I learned of scrumptious creations. 
It's a turkey leg. Go ahead, explain Tell everything. Tell us about the turkey this leg. This here is, is our famous turkey leg that it are two pretzel rods. They are dipped in caramel. They are then wrapped in cashew nuts and then double dipped in our famous Swiss chocolate. Oh. <laughs> it sounds terrible. It mm. is so bad for you that it is so good for you. <laughs> you just want more you and more die. and more and more. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It is awesome. So seven weeks to the day from when I fell, I have a doctor's appointment with Dr. Siska again. And I think he's going to loosen the lock at my knee so that I can begin to bend my knee a little bit. And I'm thinking maybe he'll let me put some weight on the leg. He takes off the brace and says, can you lift your leg? And I say, sure. And because of all the PT, I can lift my leg. And he goes, well, you can then kiss the brace goodbye or keep it as a souvenir. So here's my brace. He said, you can go full weight on both legs or as tolerated the weight. And so I could stand up and I can start to walk. I celebrated with my main physical therapist, Danielle Rora, who immediately got me practicing with a cane. Then early that Saturday, a nurse's aide came in and asked me to stay in my room. What? She told me that the hospital was in lockdown. There'd been a shooting at a synagogue in Squirrel Hill. The terrible events at Tree of Life on that day changed Pittsburgh forever, changed everything. I, I know we all mourned and grieved. I, I took no photos that day. The next day, Sunday, would be my last full day at the TCU. I wanted to remember the good things, the help and service, all the attention and care that I'd received. I wanted to remember all the kindness and love I felt. I tried to get pictures of and with many of the nurses and therapists and staff who tended to me for so long. I'd miss them all a lot. Matt Conrad helped me get some of my accumulated stuff out of the room. And on Monday morning, he came and brought my car to pick me up. I'd had a remarkable stay in that nursing home inside that hospital. I felt like I was leaving home to go home. How would I ever say thanks to everyone? I'd start more physical therapy before the end of the week. I think I recommended the TCU at McGee, right? Yeah. You were lucky to get in here and we were lucky to have you. What, you were on my unit for seven weeks? Oh my goodness, you're a little bit longer than the average person. <laughs> we're highly dedicated to women's health, um, but we also have a lot of complimentary services the TCU or transitional care unit. Um, we have many other um, offerings as well. We yeah. just liked you so much that we kept you for seven weeks. Because <laughs> we love having you, but we love it when you leave too.